my name is Ivy McIver. I am the executive director of the SR Series product line at Cirrus Aircraft. And today, I am so honored and thrilled to be introducing the G7 Plus to you and the world. Um, I am here with an uh, SR Series SR22 G7 Plus, and there's a lot of new features that we're introducing, but I think the real star of the show is the fact that all G7 Pluses and all SR Series aircraft moving forward from today will be equipped standard with Safe Return Emergency Auto Land. So with Safe Return Emergency Auto Land, we're introducing the ability for anyone to land the plane with the touch of a button. In the case of pilot incapacitation, even in the case where a pilot is alone and is unresponsive or behaving erratically, the system can actually sense that and activate Safe Return automatically. So there's actually three different ways that Safe Return can be activated. One is by pushing the button. So if a passenger notices that the pilot is incapacitated or something does happen to the pilot, the passenger can actually land the plane with the touch of a button. Um, if the pilot is alone, um, the system will actually recognize if the pilot's been unresponsive and not interacting with the flight deck, or for some reason the pilot is behaving erratically, and safe return will activate automatically. Now, the safe return system can actually be deactivated by the pilot at any time during the sequence. So if the button is pushed inadvertently, or if the button is pushed and the pilot regains consciousness or regains the ability to fly the plane, they can deactivate it by just hitting the autopilot disconnect. So I'll kind of walk you through the sequence of what happens. When the system is first activated, um, the autopilot engages in level mode for a period of 10 seconds. At that point in time, uh, during that 10 seconds, there's an oral warning and a visual warning on the PFD notifying the pilot that Safe Return Emergency Auto Land has been activated. If it's deactivated at any time during that 10 seconds, the pilot just goes back to hand flying the plane and the Safe Return system has not sequenced into the actual emergency phase of the activation. After that 10 seconds, Safe Return takes over control of the airplane and the airplane essentially becomes an autonomous vehicle. So it takes care of aviate, navigate, communicate. Everything that a pilot would actually do to fly the plane, the safe return system takes over. So things like decision making, um, deciding what weather is around, reviewing what weather is around, reviewing the um, surrounding obstacles, surrounding terrain, nearby airports, evaluating what the possible destination airports are that we could go to and divert to in this emergency. It's also taking control of a lot of the systems of the airplane. So it takes control of the icing system, the flaps, the uh, fuel pump, the mixture, the throttle, the autopilot. It also takes control of the communication. So it will automatically squawk an emergency code. It will broadcast and declare an emergency for you on both an emergency frequency and the most appropriate um, frequency, either whatever you've been talking on. So whether that's center or approach or departure or tower or CTAP, it's going to broadcast your emergency on that frequency as well as an emergency frequency. Once it goes through its reasonably complex algorithm of evaluating the environment, how much fuel you have, the, the terrain, the obstacles, like I said before, and searching for a nearby airport that has a runway that's at least 4,500 feet long, at least 75 feet wide, it's paved, and it has a GPS approach with vertical guidance. Um, it makes all the, it goes through the uh, algorithm, kind of calculates the most appropriate destination, and then it sets the flight plan and the destination to be that identified airport um, and starts to navigate towards that airport. So that's what's happening kind of in the, in the system um, and on the outside of the airplane, right? On the inside of the airplane, it's very passenger focused because it's assuming that you've had an emergency with the pilot and the passengers 
need reassurance um, and need to kind of know what's going on. So you don't want to make the passengers uncomfortable. You want to make them as comfortable as possible and reassure them that the safe return system has control of the airplane and is safely flying them to a nearby airport where they'll be met by emergency vehicles. So the um, all of the screens on the flight deck turn into very passenger friendly screens. So the PFD and the MFD show a very decluttered, simplified map and simplified um, PFD showing the speed you're going, just labeled speed, very layman terms, big fonts, um, altitude and what direction you're going. A really simplified map showing your airplane, um, a very basic map, a pink line showing your trajectory to the airport and your airport. It's also in, uh, notifying the passengers of the state of the flight. So it will tell passengers we're landing in seven minutes. We've got two and a half hours of fuel on board. In a minute, we're gonna be turning left. In three minutes, we're gonna be descending. So it gives the passengers a heads up um, of what the airplane is about to do and where it's going. Uh, so there's no surprises to the passengers. So at that point, the servos bring the power all the way back, deploy the flaps to 50% and configure for a 95 knot approach speed to the end of the runway. At the approach end of the runway, approximately 60 feet above the runway, the power will come all the way back and the plane will start configuring for the landing. It will descend to about 50 feet above the, air, uh, above the runway, fly the flare using the radar altimeter to determine exactly how far we are from the runway, bleed off the airspeed, fly the flare, and touch those mains right down on the runway. Now, as soon as we touch down on the runway, the flaps will retract and the safe return um, emergency auto land braking system will engage. Um, the brakes are applied evenly and when the aircraft comes to a complete stop, the fuel pump is shut off and the mixture automatically retracts to zero and the engine is shut off. At that point in time, there's a video played um, on the MFD instructing the passengers to wait for the airplane to come to a complete stop, wait for the propeller to come to a complete stop, and then egress from the airplane. So it really is this very well-integrated, well-engineered safety system that takes you from cruise flight all the way down to touchdown, complete stop, and engine shutdown on the runway. Thinking about maximizing passenger comfort and maximizing um, sort of that peace of mind and minimizing the trepidation of getting into a small airplane if you're not familiar with it um, has always been part of our design philosophy and that was core to developing Safe Return. Um, so you know it's, it wasn't just a well let's design a system that lands the plane in an emergency. It was let's think about things like passenger comfort. So one thing that you'll notice if you're up high the descent rate even if you're not up high but the descent rate to the runway is really shallow. Um, and there is um, it, it, the um, algorithm sort of builds in um, vectors and uh, perhaps a, a wide turn to sort of descend at a comfortable rate to lose the altitude you need to position for, uh, for a safe landing. Um, all of the screens are designed to reassure the passengers um, and, and kind of keep the passengers in control. So if you think about some of the things that we introduced with the G7, um, one of the big things when we introduced the G7 was the touchscreen controls. What that enabled us to do um, is when we integrated Safe Return, it gives the ability to turn each one of those touchscreen controllers into just a one-touch microphone for uh, for the passengers. So you'll notice when we go up and go for a flight, when those touchscreen controllers um, turn into the safe return mode, each one just has a really big touchscreen button on it um, that all the passenger has to do to communicate with ATC is just put their finger on the touchscreen button and that enables the microphones um, and the headsets to be able to um, communicate with ATC, which is pretty great. So it's a real thrill to be able to bring this to market. I think it's really impactful for the market if you kind of think about um, the airframes that have an emergency auto land system already. Um, so this is not a, a brand new technology. It's something that's been in the in the industry and, and out, actually deployed um, out in the market for about five years. But all of those airframes are uh, digitally controlled turbine and turboprop engine. This is the very first 
Histon airplane to have this system um, certified and available. And in sheer volume, we're producing upwards of 600 airframes per year. When you get into about a year and a half, two years into production, there will be more SR series equipped with Safe Return Emergency Auto Land or an Emergency Auto Land system than any other airframe combined. So we're really taking this technology and bringing it to more people at a level that's attainable for more people and a level that's applicable to a wider range of pilots. So, you're looking at folks that are flying the SR series who are brand new student pilots, all the way up to very experienced multi-thousand hour pilots and everywhere in between. And the safe return system is really there um, to add peace of mind for the passengers, to keep people in aviation longer. Obviously our, our pilot population is generally getting older. Um, so to keep people in aviation longer, give them a little bit of peace of mind that like, hey, if something happens to me, I know my passengers are safe. Um, and to bring more people into aviation. So at Cirrus, we're always innovating. Um, I've been at Cirrus for almost two decades. Um, we've been delivering Cirrus since 99. And from the get-go, um, we're constantly looking at ways to bring more people into aviation, to introduce personal aviation to more people, to make pe more people comfortable with the idea of personal aviation. And all of the innovations that we have introduced along the way um, not only enhance the pilot experience, enhance the passenger experience, but also enable innovations in the future. Um, so while I can't comment on what is on the future of the roadmap, rest assured that Safe Return is setting Cirrus up to introduce more innovative features, um, introduce more things that reduce pilot workload, that bring people into aviation, that make people more comfortable with aviation, and to grow the aviation industry because we're all just really passionate about what we do, um, passionate about aviation, and we really want to share it with as many people as we possibly can. I guess the last thing I'll kind of say is that throughout this certification process and throughout um, the commercialization process, I've personally activated the system over 80 times um, and I've, I've overseen over 40 emergency auto lands to a full stop and I have never felt so confident in a system I would absolutely trust my life and the life of my passengers to the safe return system. So with that, I'm very excited to take you all on a ride along uh, for the safe return activation. So you wanted to have us to do it? Check All right, so um, we are basically set up for our safe return activation. So we'll reach up and uh, go ahead and hit the safe return button. You ready? Yep. Emergency auto okay, land. Okay, so the first thing activating. is that the emergency auto land is activating. Emergency auto land activating. And I'll kind of keep my narration to emergency a minimum, so you auto can land hear. activating. Emergency. The Safe Return Emergency Autoland System is now controlled. Remain calm and please avoid touching the flight controls, which may interfere with the Autoland system. Your airplane will now navigate to and land at the safest nearby airport. Your destination airport is displayed on the bottom of the left hand screen. And your estimated time until landing is displayed at the top of Major the screen. Major 8 traffic 1 o'clock in 3 miles. So basically what's happened is the safe return system is taking control of the airplane. It went through an algorithm to determine where the closest airport is. It's identified McGee Tyson as the airport. And we are now navigating to that airport. So we're turning and it's giving the passengers kind of an, an update of what to expect. In two minutes, we're going to turn left. We're going to descend in a minute. We've got 13 miles remaining into the airport. We're landing in six minutes. We've got 2.8 hours of fuel, so no worries about running out of fuel or anything. We've got plenty of fuel to do what we want. Yeah. Very simplified map of where we're going and how we're going to get there. So basically, the safe control system, safe return system has control of everything. Yeah. The flaps, the fuel pump, the mixture, the power. And you'll see it, the power kind of maneuvering to maintain a 145 cruise speed. As we approach this spot where we're configuring for landing, You'll see the power come back, you'll see the, the flaps deploy to 50%, and we'll sequence into our landing uh, configuration. 
There we go. Yep. Your airplane is now maneuvering onto its final approach. The emergency auto land system will continue to control your airplane down to a safe, controlled landing on the runway. So now we're configured for landing. There's no action required. We're landing in four minutes and it is going to use pitch and power just like a pilot would to maintain a 95 knot approach speed. So you can see it's a very simplified display oh, yeah. Yeah, information. I've, I, I don't have any pilot specific things. Like the passenger doesn't need to know where, there, where other traffic is. The passenger doesn't need to know about engine information or yeah. obstacles or anything like that. All the passenger needs to know is that the safe return system has control of the airplane. There's nothing that they do to worry about. Um, you know, here's a map. This is a synthetic vision display that, they, that we keep there in case you were in IMC. Well, so let's say you deployed the you deployed safe yeah, return or activated safe return you and you were in an IMC situation, you couldn't see out the window. That can be a little bit disconcerting for a passenger. So here's here's what it should look like out the window. There's the runway. Yeah. And here's our pathway right to the runway. So again, it's just maintaining that 95 knots. We're aiming for the 1,000 foot markers. You know, it's not going to do a short field landing or anything like that. We've got plenty of runway, and the plane knows that. So we're going to, you know, use what runway we need to make it a nice, smooth landing. Yeah. And could you take over controls at any time? At any time, I could disconnect it. Okay. Yep. So now we've moved into the landing phase. Hey, Sigma, with We're tracking six, that Robinson, center line. The power's coming all the way back. We're going to fly that flare sequence. The same flight level 270 on 380 is available on flight service. Right on center line. Okay, wow. Now, the side, we're on the ground now. The flaps have retracted to zero. Yep. The emergency auto land brakes are engaging. So that's all the emergency auto land brakes. Wow. 429 er traffic, two and a half miles straight in for the parallels of Cirrus, wind calm, runway two. And we're going to come to a complete option. stop on the runway. Now, the fuel the pump is shut off, off, even though the, the <laughs> switch is still on. Yeah. Um, the fuel pump is actually shut off, the system has shut off the fuel pump. And now you see that mixture coming back. Yep. Incredible. Engine comes to a complete shutdown. Wow. And instructions for the passenger. Wait for the airplane and propeller to come to a complete stop. Love before it. Exiting. Yeah. Hmm. To exit, lift the handle on either of the two cabin door armrests. There's tape on I the left love that. That was incredible. Monitor ground point All right, left on Alpha 4.